Today's class, we got a jump start on thinking about how to use the triangle inequality to prove statements about comparisons between real numbers. So we looked at the first two problems on the group assignment. The first of which asked us to prove that for all real values of x, the absolute value of x is less than, strictly less than, the sum of the absolute values of one less and one greater than x. Um, so in this proof, uh, we began by noticing that the right-hand side of this inequality um, is something that, because it's the sum of absolute values, the triangle inequality can tell us something about. And so we observe that according to the triangle inequality, the absolute value of the sum of x minus 1 and x plus 1 will be less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. But what's great about that is that the minus 1 and the plus 1 then cancel inside, those, uh, inside the absolute value. Um, and so what we find out directly from the triangle inequality is that the right-hand side of this statement is always greater than or equal to the absolute value of 2x. Now we're going to use some of the properties of absolute value to argue that the absolute value of 2x is in fact either greater than the absolute value of x if x is not 0, or it's equal to the absolute value of x if x is 0. And so in that case, we'll check separately. So in the case where x is in fact equal to 0, then the left-hand side of this inequality is just the absolute value of 0. The right-hand side is the sum of the absolute values of plus and minus 1, and that sum is equal to 2. So in the case where x is equal to 0, this is manifestly true. When x is not equal to 0, the absolute value of 2x is strictly greater than the absolute value of x, for reasons we'll talk about in a minute. But then that means that this side, which is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 2x, is then also greater than the absolute value of x, which is what we wanted to show. So I made the point in class that while the work that's shown here um, is sort of working on both sides of the inequality, it's sometimes more conventional um, in an analysis setting to work an inequality from one side to the other without looking at both sides concurrently. So I posited this alternative way of writing up our work. And so this is the case where we assume that x is not 0. So I start on the right-hand side of the inequality that we're trying to prove. And I can say, well, according to the triangle inequality, that sum is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the sum of x minus 1 and x plus 1, which we then simplify to the absolute value of 2x. Now here's the rest of that part of the argument. Because the absolute value function is homogeneous, that means that we can break it apart across multiplication. So the absolute value of 2x is the same as the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of x. And then since the absolute value of 2 is 2, we get that that's twice the absolute value of x. But then why is that necessarily greater than the absolute value of x? Well, we can see that 2 is greater than 1, obviously. Um, but we only know that this is a strict greater than sign as long as we know that the absolute value of x, this other quantity, is a strictly positive quantity. Well, the absolute value is never negative. So the only case that we have to worry about is could this absolute value be 0? And here we have to argue that there's no way this absolute value can be 0 because the only number whose absolute value is equal to 0 is the number 0 itself. And we've already assumed that x is not, in fact, the number 0. And so therefore, the absolute value of x is strictly positive, which means that twice the absolute value of x is strictly greater than 1 times the absolute value of x. That property is called non-degeneracy. And so organizing our work in this way, we kind of have to read from the beginning of our inequality to the end. And any time we do a string of inequalities like this, all the inequality symbols that we use need to be facing the same direction. And here they are. First, we took this quantity and replaced it by something which was no bigger. It was either less than or equal to the thing we started with. Then we replaced it with something identical, something identical. And then when we compared another inequality, replaced it by something which was, again, less than. And so therefore, since this is less than this, and this is less than or equal to that, that means that this is strictly less than that. So since all of our inequality symbols are facing the same way, when I read it from beginning to end, I have proven that the sum of the absolute values of x minus 1 and x plus 1 exceeds the absolute value of x. And so that concludes our work for problem number 1. Problem 2 is what I called in class a fever dream of mine. Um, it kind of is meant to illustrate how we use the triangle inequality in a conceptual way in analysis. Um, the idea here is that we have two real numbers, x and y, and we don't know up front how x and y compare one to another. But we do know how x and y compare to these four other unknown quantities, a, b, c, and e. And so I use this little diagram here. It's actually a weighted graph uh, to sort of depict the, the inequalities that we know, the bounds, the upper bounds that we know on the distances between 
x and y and these other quantities. So for instance, the distance from x to b is no greater than 6, is less than 6. Uh, the distance from x to e is less than 5, and so on. And so the task here is to figure out what is the best upper bound, best here meaning least upper bound, that we can get on the distance from x to y based on this information. So the claim is that the absolute value of x minus y must be less than 12. And how we got 12 is we looked in this graph and figured out what is the potentially shortest path from x to y, finding that the shortest way to get from x to y, this is a bit like the traveling salesman problem, is to go from x to e, and thence to c, and thence to a, and thence to y. So it's this circuitous path that takes us all the way around this part of the graph. And now to actually use the triangle inequality to prove that the distance from x to y can be no greater than, in fact has to be less than, uh, 5 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2, what we have to do is take the quantity absolute value of x minus y and introduce a bunch of new stuff inside of the absolute value so that we can split it apart into its component pieces. This is what I call the add and subtract trick. So because we're making a stop at e along the way, we're going to subtract and add a copy of e. Because we also stop at c, we'll subtract and add c. We'll subtract and add a because we stop at a. And we can check ourselves by noting that if I just cancel my e's, c's, and a's, I'm going to end up back where I started. But having all that extra stuff gives us some plus signs inside of our absolute value. And as soon as I have a sum inside of my absolute value, I can apply the triangle inequality. And it's applying the triangle inequality here that lets us split apart this big thing into the sum of the distance from x to e, the distance from e to c, the distance from c to a, and the distance from a to y. And because we have an upper bound on each one of those distances, respectively 5, 4, 1, and 2, each of these quantities is less than that respective uh, bound. And therefore, their sum is less than the sum of those bounds, and the sum of those bounds is 12. Okay. So again, the main point of this problem is twofold. It's conceptual. It helps us to understand why the triangle inequality is useful for us. It helps us to quantify, or at least to bound, the distance between two unknown things uh, in terms of the distances from those things to other things. Right? And the second part is this nifty algebraic trick that I call the add and subtract trick, which is how we can introduce new stuff inside of my absolute value that helps me to bridge the gap between two quantities of unknown distance to introduce a quantity in between, or maybe multiple quantities in between, to which the distances are in fact known.